tools for nature journaling are fairly simple. They require some sort of notebook. Um, I like these little uh, tiny notebooks. They have a little bit of a heavier grade paper on them. And then they can be any size. It really depends on your preference. So here's a small one. And then this is a big one. It's from bearbooks.com. Um, the other tool that I really like are these Sharpie pens. You can get them at Staples. They come in a pack of four. It's really up to you. What I like about these is that I can go over them with watercolors and they don't run or bleed through the paper. The first thing I do when I get a nature journal is I put my name on the inside cover and information on how to return it to me because this turns into a fairly precious book. I also put a sense of scale. So in this case, it's centimeters. I just take a ruler and I mark it off. So in case I want to measure something while I'm in the field, I have a unit of measure. What I love about nature journaling is that it's a combination of drawing and writing. And there really aren't any rules. A couple things that I keep in mind are on the sticker. I like to always put the date and location where I am. And sometimes I look at the position of the sun or the weather. I note the wind direction, the temperature, maybe a sunrise or sunset, the tides, the moon. I like to sit quietly when I first find a spot and just listen and smell the air. You really can use your other senses to get a deeper sense of the world around you. Sometimes a page in a nature journal just seems too big for what I need to record. And so I like to sometimes just draw a box. So I'll just draw in ink, just a square box, and I'll do my drawing on the inside. And then on the edges, I'll put what I'm seeing. I'm seeing some knotted rackweed. This is a boulder beach. These are some of the plants that I'm seeing. You'll notice that I'm putting the location. I'm on Burnt Island at the seawall. It's a clear day. And I've put the date. Again, these are just simple color pencils on pen and ink. I don't tend to use pencil. It's just a preference, but you can do whatever you wish. Here are some examples of the box method within my nature journal. There are times when I focus on an organism. In this case, I was looking at raspberries. I looked at the color. You'll notice I have the size. I'm writing uh, notes to myself that it has dimples or lines along it. Um, I'm looking at the lobeness. Again, I'm looking at all different things. And I'm again, I'm writing and I'm also drawing. I mean, these are not fine art pieces, but they're just thoughts, memories. And there's also little details that I'm marking here and there. Again, this isn't a masterpiece that's going to hang in a museum. It's something for me to remember and to help me identify this when I use a field guide. I also use nature journals to record some expeditions I've been on. So in this case, I was in uh, Australia in the upper right-hand corner, uh, which is basically the wet tropic region. And this is where we were stationed. We started in Keynes, and then we were in the South Johnson camp for one week. And then we were in Shipton's flat for the next week. Our Earth Watch expedition was recording the number, size, and species found in the cloud forest of Australia. We often encounter species that are endemic, meaning they're only found in Australia. I also adapted my nature journal and turned it into a travel journal when I visited Japan. This is one of my favorite images. These are done in pen and ink with uh, watercolors. So you can see it has images 
It has some text and just some vivid memories. For a lot of these, I would draw from photographs that I took from that day. If you take the time to sit still, nature will come to you. I've had hummingbirds put their tongues up my nose. I've had snakes curl up in my lap and I've had dragonflies land on the tip of my pencil.